Chicago over 18 years ago, and his experience as both a client and a consultant. He will be presenting a talk titled Build It. They will come. Please join me in welcome. And yes, I'm having a bad hair day, so I'm bad as well. Uh, do I get two shoes? <laughs> Hi, welcome. Um, go to the day will come. The, the kind of the root here is it, traditionally you would go to the day warehouse and expect people to just, you know, that's all they have. The, the world's evolving and it's changing, and that's kind of what we want to talk about today. Is, is, what's happening and you know, what direction do you want to go. So a lot of it's self, and, uh, self service now, that's the big change, right? So users don't want to wait for IT, they're frustrated. Um, I remember going to a client one time and he said, how come I ask for a new calculation in my reports and it takes three weeks and it's wrong, right? So, a lot of folks are no longer willing to put up with that. So self-service is kind of the, the, the name of the game. Okay. So you know, the question on our end is how does self-service affect us? Uh, well, we are, Aviana, we're, so we are a consulting firm. We do data analytics, data warehousing, we do some big data. We also do FPM, TM1, that kind of stuff. Uh, we are an IBM as well as a Microsoft partner. Although we are agnostic on, on tools that the client says, hey, we want you to, to work in whatever, we're fine with that. I keep hitting the wrong buttons. Uh, I'm gonna see. Here's, these are some of our clients. Let's get that. So here's, here's kind of where we want to start. So some interesting statistics out there, right? 80% of the data that's out there, when you talk about like Internet of Things, as well as ERP, as well as uh, streaming data, Etc. has been created in the last two years. It's, it's a complete explosion going on out there. Only 1% of this data is being analyzed currently. A lot of the problem is around what do we analyze? You know, you're drinking from a fire hose. What do I use? What, what, what matters to me? What's important? Okay, data integration and prep time, 75%. So the big thing out there is data scientists, right? Do you data scientists? Because I like these guys. Yeah, so you spend a lot of time doing data prep. Right now, for a data scientist, that's great. You kind of want that raw data because you want to see where the holes are. You don't want to clean it. Straight. But for a business analyst, whose job is not to prep the data but to analyze the data, right? They don't have. They can't afford this time. So, data scientist, new hot job. Question so far. By the way, if you, I'm okay. We've been around. For the, this is the traditional, right? We've all been there. Hey, your data warehouse is done. And in fact, if you go back way before even agile development, it was two years, we raised the curtain, it's obsolete, it's not right, it's not what we asked for. Oh, and my requirements changed in the last two years on top of it, right? So you can't work like this anymore. You can't work like this anymore. Um, this is a slide that you show on the over. Forty percent of users don't have confidence in their data. Forty-two percent of managers use wrong information at least once a week. This is survey results, by the way. Fifty-nine percent say, "Man, I should have used this. I didn't." The killer at the bottom. Seventy-five percent of the users surveyed blame IT. <laughs> IT workers. Yeah. My wife at one point, she's an analyst, and she's like, maybe I should get into IT. And I said, honey, you don't have the temperament for this. And she said, what do you mean? And I said, it's a completely thankless job. When you're doing things right, nobody says anything, but as soon as it messes up, you're the biggest whatever on the planet. So, exactly. So now, let's throw big data on top of that. So I love this quote. Big data is what happened when the cost of storing it became less than the cost of making the decision to throw it away, right? Storage has gotten cheap. And honestly, the term big data, I'm not a big fan of. I, like, I prefer the term complex data. Because if you think about big data, you know, there's the, the four Bs or five Bs or whatever. But, you know, uh, volume, right? That may be a big data problem. But you may not have a volume problem, but I want to serve up videos. 
well, videos take up a lot of space, so by definition, it's a big, you know, it falls under big data. But really, serving up videos is more of a complex issue. Um, you've also got things like appliances as a big data uh, tool that com comes into play, right? But, and, and now the big thing is the cloud. Well, the cloud may not be a big data problem from a perspective of volume, velocity, veracity, et cetera, but it is a problem because, you know, I've done three different cloud solutions already, and the problems that we had had nothing to do with volume. It had to do with network bottlenecks. So how do you get past that? So you're going to solve that problem a little different than with the traditional ETL. So why self-service? Self-service is kind of, at least from what we're seeing, this is now the big trend. Okay, you've got new and emerging external data. We, we have a real time need, possibly, possibly, right? And I say possibly because often a client will say, well, we, don't, we want real time. And we say, well, do you want real time or do you really need real time? Because real time comes with a cost. It comes with a lot of cost. Not just monetary, but, you know, costing how you look at your data, how you view it, et cetera. Uh, as an account, as an ex-accountant, I don't like real time because I want to run that report three times during the day and get the same answer. If it's real time, I get a different answer every time. So I have to filter out today all the time. Seasonality, and analysts need to explore and discover. So the data warehouse, bottom line, can't be a one size fits all. So again, the traditional way of let's gather requirements from three different people and a sponsor, build it out, expect everyone to use it, kind of going away. How's it? Okay. So, soft service is the big rate, but there are some issues with it, right? So, performance. If you're stitching together large sources or even regular size or smaller sources or average sources from multiple platforms, right? You have performance issues. It's got to grind against two or three different source systems. You got a flat file you're inducing. Mismatch is a big thing, right? Master data management can be, become a big problem when you're doing self-service. And by the way, the other problem with self-service is everyone's doing their own thing, right? So you have confusing models, lack of business understanding. So I'm looking at the problem one way, you're looking at it another way, we get two different answers, right? Which one's correct? So lack of governance, big one, big one, big one. Lack of user training, you know? I've been doing this for 18 years, and the new hire who's been doing it for a year and a half Right? Now we get two different answers. Who's correct? Inaccurate or misunderstood results. Um, I, I love my data scientists because you get an analyst and he goes, oh, there's a correlation here, so this is causing that. And it's like, no, correlation is not causality, right? Mm -hmm. So a misunderstanding of what you're looking at, what the results are. All of these are, are challenges to the self-service. And then I <coughs> kind of hit the last one already, inadequate user experience. So this slide here, it's a little interactive, we're gonna go through this. If you get this slide, then you've got my message. Okay, this is what I wanna explain. So traditionally, we built that operational data. And this is a little, we have a, a large H&G hospitality gaming. Uh, so forgive, this, this comes from that presentation, so that's why you see gaming, lodging, convention. This could be any data, your financial data, your operational data, right? Your demand planning data, whatever. You crank it through the data warehouse, and you serve it up on a BI platform, right? People, are, the reports are pushed to them, okay? They kind of get what you serve up. And, you know, I think everyone that's in my industry has been doing this for years. Recently, now you start, you know, a few years, about 10 years ago, OLAP became the thing, right? So let's serve up an analytics store. It could be in the form of a queue, could be in the form of a, a semi-queue, Etc. right? So now I can analyze, I can slice and dice. So I'm no longer looking at operational type reports, tactical type stuff, I can get a little more strategic. Still backward looking though, right? Still backward looking. I'm looking at traditional sources. I may or may not enrich it. Getting a little more self-service, <coughs> dashboards became the rage. Now we're starting to do budgeting and planning type stuff, etc. And now big data hits us. What are we looking at for big data? Well, it could be Internet of Things type stuff, right? So I've, I've got a manufacturing client, and they want they want the, the, the machine data fed into the warehouse so we can look at downtimes and causes, et cetera, and error codes. It could be uh, 
I, I want to know, I'm a hotel and I've got a big spender. I want to know where he's at while he's blowing all this money because I want more of it. Okay, and so I'm looking at streaming data, mm -hmm. looking at cloud data, okay? Um, I don't, I'm a, I'm a startup, I've got a lot of data, but I can't afford servers and people to maintain it, etc. so I would rather rent space in the cloud. So I have a challenge getting, you know, taking care of that. I want to look at people's Facebook stuff, LinkedIn, etc. So now we get into the stuff that's happening now. And this is, uh, the, the word data lake is not up here, but that's kind of inherent in this, right? And we're familiar with data lake. So data lake is just, a single repository where you just kind of plow everything into it. So you'll have your raw sources, you'll also pull your data warehouse into it, etc. And now your data scientists are going crazy. They're, they're having a great time. They're, they're working in here, they're working in here, they're working in here, they're working in the raw data, they're stitching it all together, they're looking for those nuggets, what do we do? So this is all that self-service stuff, right? And now they come up with the data set, blending, preparation. And they come to management and they say, you know what, this is really important what we're looking at here, right? More people need to be aware of it. Let's take that data prep and feed it back to the warehouse. So this is where self-service helps because, and, it, and it's kind of started with the insurance industry with um, actuaries. So I've done about nine or 10 large data warehouses for insurance companies. And I always worked with the actuaries. The actuaries, in my opinion, were kind of the predecessors to today's data scientists because the actuaries knew that data, right? They're doing risk analysis, they're saying, you know, who's a good risk, who's a bad risk, where should we set, you know, what's the age limit? Like, like why do 21 year old men get charged more for auto insurance, right? Uh, why is your house located in this floodplain cost more to insure than your house out in the desert, right? So the actuaries knew that data, and so every time I did a data warehouse for insurance companies, I went to the actuary and said, what do we need to build out? Because you go to the users and you're like, well, I think I need this, and I know I need that, and I might need this, but the actuaries are like, no, this is what needs to be done. So the data scientists now can integrate with the ETL guys, the data warehouse guys, and what this will do is it will speed up the discovery, it will speed up the design, right? And you're no longer building data warehouses where the users say, oh, this took three years and it's wrong. Because the scientists are there saying, hey, this is the stuff we need to look at. This is what needs to be analyzed. Does all this make sense? Any questions on this? All right, so, Little, little bitty exercise here. So I want to go a couple through some use cases. So when we talk about self-service, right, you've got your operational type metrics and information you're looking at. You also got stuff that falls more into self-service. So revenue management, right? Is that more operational or self-service? It's more operational data, right? It's financial statements, data cash flows, Balance sheet, income statement, product pricing optimization. How should we price our products? I would argue that that's both. Depends on what questions you're asking. The inventory, definitely operational type data. Loyalty program. So you walk into Target and all of a sudden stuff starts popping up on your phone, right? So I want to analyze, and what I'm talking about here is like, how do I analyze this data, right? So this is more, we're not sure what we're going after, so we want that data scientist or that self-service person to be able to grab whatever they need at the time. We don't want to wait on IT. Gearing ratios, if you don't know what that is, that's labor type stuff. Voice of the customer. <laughs> Definitely self-service. Okay, last one, customer analytics. Self-service, yes. So, we like the suits versus t-shirts type thing, right? So, uh, 20 years ago, we saw suits, now we're evolving into t-shirts. And again, a lot of this is because the clients 
where the users are becoming more capable. Um, I was talking to a lot of people at our booth today, and some of the students were like, oh yeah, I'm studying this in school, I'm studying that in school. I'm like, that didn't exist in my school. So users are more capable. They know more. They know their data better, right? Um, I remember walking into projects and saying, hey, what do we want to do? And the client's like, I, I don't even know what we have, right? So I'm doing the data discovery. Now I walk in the door and the clients are like, oh yeah, this is what we need. We need this, this, and this. Right? So they're more capable. Um, they're looking for more opportunities. They want to do a lot of experimentation in their data, which is all good. They don't want to wait, right? And they're looking for non-traditional type metrics and, and nuggets of data. Self-service uh, preparation. So the big message here is there are now tools becoming available, and these are all fairly new. Um, IBM Cognos Analytics will do some, uh, people sometimes argue with me on that one, but they do have the concept of data modules in there now, so you can pull in web sheets and join it with existing data. Alteryx, I think this picture down here might be, I don't know, this is uh, Data Connect. But there's a lot of tools out there that, that, that do this data prep. And what's nice about it is, if anyone's ever done SPSS, there's a data preparation component to that as well. And it, it kind of gives you a graphical of what the steps were you went through. Um, what's really nice about it is, you know, you can do all this with scripts, right? You can just write SQL and just go to town and do the same thing. But the problem there is that if you decide, oh, there's a problem with what I did, I need to back up three steps and change something. With these tools, what's nice is you can go in there, break the link, add another link, or get rid of something, join it back together, rerun the data, and, and get out of it what you're looking for. Main ingredients of self-service, definitions, governance is big. Clean is good, but not critical. Um, I was talking to someone at the booth who was a data scientist, and she pointed out that I don't want your cleans data because there's value in what's missing. It tells me something. <coughs> High performance, always a big, good idea. So back to my previous slide where we said, hey, we want to do the traditional plus <coughs> new stuff. Same thing, right? If you hire a contractor and he shows up, opens his toolbox, and all he has is a hammer, you probably fire him on the spot. So it's important to be able to take different approaches to different problems. And that's kind of the name of the game. Our industry is evolving. Uh, 20 years ago, we would, we would put you know a dozen people into a client and just crank out reports. Now the clients want to do that themselves. And what they want from us is architecture, approach, and experience on problems. Hey, I've seen that before, here's how we solved it. Here's the pitfalls, here's what went well, could have done this better, etc. This is more of the same. This is kind of your, your steps of, of how you, you get to self-service. So understanding the problem is always the big thing, right? Is that your 12 step if you're I am. <laughs> you have to admit there's a problem. And the first step of solving any problem is finding that problem. Mm -hmm. The big thing here, and I've actually been using this methodology in data warehouse development for the past probably seven or eight years, is this whole concept of iterations, right? So, you know, it used to be when I first started consulting, the solutions were, they took a software approach to things where you would design it up front, start building it out, nothing got unveiled till the very end. Now we're taking a much more agile approach to things. And so I'll walk in with a client, we'll, we'll look at the requirements, we'll look at what we're building out. We'll do almost like a whiteboard design, like not even a formal, just kind of script it up and say, yeah, you know, are we, are we there? Is that what we want? We'll take notes on it, we'll move things around. And then they say, yeah. And then I tell them up front, we're gonna build a, a quick one. It's not gonna be perfect, but it'll hit that 90%. And then I want that feedback. And then we'll just keep looping through. Um, what I find is A, the clients get a lot more excited because they're not waiting three months to see the first thing, and B, they're more involved, so I get better feedback. Self-service functions the same way. Self-service functions the same way. The 
big message on this slide. It's not requirements anymore, it's use cases, right? So it used to be, I would want a list of this, or I want this data set. And so now getting, getting the users to say, hey, here's, what, here's the question I'm after, right? This applies not only to the self-service, but to the um, even building out the managed data warehouse. 80-20 rule is big, so I kind of hit that with the iterations, right? It's not going to be perfect, but let's hit most of the target, and we'll adjust as we go. This one I'm big on, oh, whoops, designed to support the majority of use cases. So I, I walked into a situation where somebody had fired someone else and asked us to fix it, and the bottom line was the client had asked for a traditional data warehouse, they asked for, you know, it was, it was around memberships, and then the prior consultant had said, well, do you want to see history on this? And they said, yeah, so they designed it in a way to get that history, but you couldn't get current, right? <laughs> it was a mess. So I walked in the door and I said, well, how many of these are, are happening right now? Well, we can't answer that question. But we can tell you who was where when, and I'm like, you're not, you know, so support the major case. Don't worry about the 20% until afterwards. And if you have to design something special for that, great. If you can tweak to get it, that's okay too. I, I just got questions time, so I'm gonna skip some of these. This is just a long quote. I, I think the slides are gonna be presented later. But basically, this is talking about governance, right? This is a huge topic. I've been huge on this always. Um, I'm a little, my surprise isn't that people are big on governance now, it's that they haven't been big on governance before. Uh, governance is just, you know, what are the rules around our data? Who can see what? What are the rules around, um, you know, uh, uniqueness? What are the rules around what, what can be presented versus not, et cetera? How data gets entered is a governance thing. What data we're going after. It's kind of our overarching of everything. I think this is my last slide and my last message. Pay attention to user interface, okay? If you were gonna stick your ATM card in one of those two machines, which one would you trust versus not? Um, but, you know, it, it, sometimes we lose sight of that. We're, we're so focused on, on engineering the data that we forget how people are gonna interact with it. Um, quick story, my very first consulting gig, which was in Indianapolis, we had spent a lot of time building out the warehouse, and there was actually another firm in there building the reports. And uh, so there was the, it was the time for the big un unveiling, right? They're gonna start showing the reports, and the CF it's for the CFO, Chief Financial Officer. So he comes in, and he's got his little entourage, and they're carrying books for him, and they all sit in the front row, and the guys I was working with, they were like, well, this isn't for you, but you should just do this, because you know, your data was all part of this, and you know, maybe they're gonna have some data questions. So they put the presentation up and they give, you know, here's, here's what we've done and blah, 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 and a bunch of boring stuff. And then they put the first report up on the, on the screen. Now this is CFO, right? Now I'm an accountant. Okay, and as an accountant, I'll tell you that it's all about the numbers. They throw the first report up there and the CFO goes, that's the wrong color, that's not the font we agreed to, and that's supposed to be a line chart, not a bar chart. He goes, this conversation is finished. Never looked at the data, never. So, you know, I'm a little blown away because I'm going, what does that matter? But users are like that. It's, it's crazy. So you do have to pay attention to how it looks and feels because if it's a pain to interact with, people don't want to deal with it. Case study, I'll skip. All right, any questions? Uh, yes. So for, um, when you go through IT for data, usually you have like insurance, like guaranteeing that your data is accurate. But if you go through self-service, how do you present like the accuracy to business? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a big part of the struggle, right? So, you know, and, and what is that vetting process? And what I will tell you, the answer to that is it depends on the client, right? Now, as a data architect, I will get involved with that, so we'll, we'll test that data. Does it make sense? Um, the, the best anchor for, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, the best anchor is always the financials because those are served up publicly. So those are vetted numbers. You've got a team of accountants that are saying, yes, this is correct. So you'll bet to that. 
But how you vet, it, it depends on the data source and where it's coming from, how accurate it is. You know, if it's internal, coming from the ERP, you have a lot more confidence in it. If it's an external source, not so much. So uh, we spend a lot of time testing, and the data scientists, again, back to that 75% of their time is data prep. A lot of that is vetting time. It's not, it's not how do I get the data, that's actually the easy part. It's did I, did I file it together right? Did I group it together right? Do I have uniqueness problems? Where's the data holes? And so vetting that data is where a lot of that time is spent. Is one platform better than the other for self-service? No, no. And in fact, uh, I would argue that no matter what you're doing, and, and I'm going to say this as an IBM and a Microsoft partner, and if they come and shoot me, I'll deny I said this. <laughs> but I will take, I'll give you the best server in the world with the biggest, baddest ETL tool out there and, and, a, and a poor design, and I'll have average medium tools with a great design, and I'll smoke you every time. It's, it, design is the overarching if you're talking about performance, accuracy, vetting, testing, whatever, the tool almost doesn't matter. And I, I'm actually having a struggle with a client right now because he keeps wanting to buy technology to throw at his problems. And I told him two technologies ago that he had a major design flaw in his approach and how things are building out. And he doesn't want to solve that problem because he thinks it costs too much. And I keep, now that he's on his Gen 3 new technology, I'm like, how much have you spent on software? Like, you know, I would be cheaper just to come in and redesign this thing and it would perform so much better. Mm -hmm. So, no, the, I, the tool is almost irrelevant. There's a minimal level of tool you need to have, right? Like, if you're, if you're going to pull out 8 million rows into, you know, an access database, that's not going to work, right? So there is a minimum level of tool, but once you're there, the tool isn't as important as the design. Design and approach are all far away from the most important factors. Hmm. Yes? Yes, uh, in regards to the question earlier, um, aren't you still going to use like a COVID process or something to near uh, or merge the uh, ETL data to <coughs> say construction data? Aren't you going to do the same process? Can you test it? You can. I mean, you can, you can test it externally, so you can extract and test. You can also test with it. Everyone's different. It, it's hard to say here's the right answer because there is no right answer. There's only wrong answers, right? Is that, I don't, I'm probably not answering your question. But yeah, so it's, you almost really have to do a continuous uh, structure that's, that's very against the Some people will build test models and algorithms. You know, I, I've had clients that simply dump everything out into Excel and look it up against each other, right? I mean, it, it's all over the map. It, it depends on competency. Depends on experience. Depends on how well they know their data. You know, um, I had one client. Uh, I wasn't the developer. I was in there doing something else. But I was called into the meeting because there was two reports that were built that were supposed to match. And you know, you crank them up, and the, the client said this one's wrong, and they didn't even test it. They said this is the right one. This is the wrong one. And it's because they knew the financials. So they looked at it and said, this one, it was AR data. And they're like, this is the right answer, this is the wrong answer. And I'm like, how do you know? Well, because I just did the balance sheet. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's all over the place. And again, I'm probably not answering your question, but it's, it's a nebulous problem. Does that make sense? No, it's, it's, it's a big problem. I mean, we're yeah. from uh, the ERP, uh, <laughs> well, it's a whole to that point, I mean, even ERP data is never all that clean, right? I mean, there's holes in it, there's stuff missing, there's duplicate records, right? So, you know, how do you test it? And, and, and again, it depends on the problem you're testing. So there is no one, one answer to it. Uh, my preference is to test it multiple ways, right? So we'll, we'll test it with kind of a sledgehammer approach where we just dump stuff out and look at bottom lines, and then we'll start going through, through some algorithms. It just, it just depends on the problem. All right, thank you, everyone.